Jesus come in and he said if these hold their peace the he said the rocks will cry out and he said they are crying out now, I don't know if y'all heard him preach that or not but it was fantastic and then he said they are crying out because of what's written on the Washington monuments and all these rocks but you know what God spoke to me about when he was speaking man, it was great I was thinking about this church right here and, I, and you know what? I, it's a wonder if we don't feel the floor shaking when we ain't crying out. When we ain't, when we ain't praising the Lord, it's a wonder if this floor don't shake because, amen, the rocks is rolled under this church. has got Jesus' name on it. Amen. So the rocks are crying out if we don't. I mean, I ain't the right church. Amen. So we got Jesus rolled on all these rocks under this church. Amen. If the rocks stop crying out, our feet's love will start shaking in here. If we don't glorify the Lord a little bit, praise His name a little bit, He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. If it hurt loose, they were down the way they sat Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. He gets on my, he gets on my back, so I'm going to get on his. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm going to put my foot on his head a little bit. What do you say, church? Let's stand our feet and let praise the name of Jesus. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If it's been a while since you shout a little bit, since you praise the Lord a little bit, and then take back what the devil's took from you. Amen. Come on. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen.
de novo A ver o que me deixa a cara depois E vê-lo ser na hora de morrer de conta Que a gente não quer na hora de não ver as estãos From morning to evening, they did cry, trying to bring down the fire from on high. But he hides your call on the waiting land. The roses shared a great high in Mary's baby hand. The morning star, he struck the honor with a burning fire. God said he would send down fire. Send it down to Elijah, said he would set the honor on fire, did he say? Said he would send down fire, send it down to Elijah. Said he would set the hour on fire. Did he say from morning till evening they did cry, trying to bring down the fire from on high? But Elijah called on the bleeding lamb, the rose of Sharon, the great high, a very flaming hand, the morning star. He struck the altar with a burning fire. God said he would send down fire, send it down to Elijah. Said he would set the altar on fire. Did he say? God said he would send down fire, send it down to Elijah. Said he would. Yes, from morning to evening, they did cry, trying to bring down the fire from on high. But Elijah called on the waiting land, the rose of shame, the great high, and Mary's lady in the morning star. He struck the honor with a burning fire. God said he would sing down fire. Hey, bless you. The honor of fire, did he say? Elijah said, stop, let me show you the man of God that you need to know. I've heard from the master and i got a request. If he was in my room, I had a contest. The building and all over me, the many stones. Mighty men begin to hold and they cry, bell, sing the fire, oh bell, sing the fire. They cry, bell, sing the fire, sing the fire.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Somebody touch him. Must have been the hand of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hey, if you need something from God, you reach out and get a hold of it. Amen. He is good all the time. Amen. All the time, God is good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We should it be cool.
Jesus. Yeah. Hey. God knows what you need. And you don't even know what to pray for. The Holy Ghost will pray for you. Come on, somebody. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Take all you need, Beth. Hey, man, God's going to fill you up. Hey, in the name of Jesus. Hey! My God. My God. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. Brother, I feel him in my head. I feel him all over me. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Come on, sir. I'm not talking about this building. Yeah, I am the God that holds the most body in my soul, saith the Lord. Each time I'm 
up until they ripened. Come on. So when we got a little bit closer, they saw it wasn't it wasn't there was no good fruit. I'm Come on, tongue tied there for a second. Well, bless you, Lord. And it says we go back to Matthew. <laughs> now I'm just trying to back my back what I'm saying up with the Word of God. Amen. Come on. So it's in chapter 21. I want you to. Remember, I'm sorry it's going everywhere. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's good. Come on. It says, Now in the morning, when he returned to the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing therefore on but leaves only. And he said unto it, Let no fruit grow from thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Yeah. So if you don't bear good fruit, you're going to wither away. Come on, you can sit there and you can say I have good fruit, but if you don't show it, it doesn't matter. Come on, you see it. I'm just going to use the first thing, so don't take this anyway. Take it for me. But if I see it in distance, it looks like you're in season. But I get a little bit close, come on, and I see that there's no good fruit. Come on, you're going to wither away and die. And in Galatians, it is talk about that as well. It talks about having bad fruit. All the things of having bad fruit. And that's right before the good fruit. And these are adultery, fortification, and cleanliness. Adolerity, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murder. It goes on. There's so many things that can be bad fruit. But he didn't give you the ability to bear bad fruit. He gave you the ability to bear good fruit because he said back in John that he is the true vine. Amen. The true, not, not any other vine. There's no other vine you need besides the true vine. Because Amen. it goes on to say later on, I'm saying if you go through chapter 15, you're going to get a lot of reassurance that you can, be, you can be bearing some good fruit. Because he said if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered away. Same as he withered away the fig tree. Right. And men would gather them and cast them into the fire. Yep. Come on. And they are burned. But if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye right. shall ask, and you will be done yeah. after you. But he's saying, but I've bear bad fruit. I've done bad things. There's no way I can bear good fruit anymore. But it's said in his word that I make all things new, and you're going to strive up, and you're going to start bearing some good fruit. Yeah. He made you yeah. good fruit. Yeah. I want to close with this. It's in chapter 16 of that. No, chapter 16, the first 16 of that. It said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you so you should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, in the name of Jesus Christ, it shall be given to you. Amen. So if you're wanting something to happen in your life, you need to call out in the name of Jesus that it's going to happen for you. Because He gave you the ability to bear good fruit. That as long as you bear that good fruit, you're going to be with Him in the kingdom of heaven. But you need to show it at all times. I want that to be perfectly clear. You can't just show it from a distance. You can't just say, I bear good fruit. I have faith. But when you get a little bit closer, Lorraine, you don't have that good fruit.
And I started thinking about what the pastor said. Come on. We always say, go take back what the devil took from you. How, how are we going to do that? Can we physically go take back some of the devil's hand? We can't physically do it, can we? When the Philistines and Israel were going to war with each other, Come on. they were fighting, and there was something amongst them that kept getting passed back and forth, and that's the Ark of the Heaven. Come on. Yes, it was. First, the Philistines had victory on the two Y'all go back and read it. I've been reading it. It's going to take a long time. And Come then, on. it said, it said the Philistines got themselves in a rain. Come on. Now, what you think about that? Sometimes you have to get yourself in a rain. And what that means is I'm going to fall in these shoes and I'm going to stop myself. Come on. You have to get yourself in a rain. In other words, you've got to get dressed for the occasion, Sister Elizabeth. Come on. If I want God to do something for me, I'm going to have to get dressed for the occasion. Come on. I'm not talking about these pants. And I'm not talking about no holy skirt. Come on. I'm not talking about no blue jeans or no sweatpants. I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. I'm yeah, talking about on. the holy armor of God. Yeah, come on. Yeah.
said, you can't serve God and mammon at the same time. That's right. Amen. And then he said, resist him. Amen. How are you going to resist the devil? Turn me back. <laughs> what was that? Turn me back. You turn your back on him. And you walk in the opposite direction. Amen. Amen. That's right. Unless you got a little bit of something. And then you walk right up to him. You slap him in the face and you take back what he took from you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know about you all, but I remember a church that had some boldness. Yeah. I remember a church that would stand in the middle of the devil's can and declare what God gave them. That's right. Come on. Don't you think it's time we get back to that? Yeah. Come on. It's time that we start worrying about who's coming in the house of God to get saved. We need to stop worrying so much about who's going to preach, who's going to sing, or who's wearing this, or who's going to be there, or who's not going to be there. Amen. We need to start getting things back right with the Lord. Amen. 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 Sometimes we got to get back to the first love, the first things. Yeah. Amen. They said, well, these things are simple. Well, they didn't they ain't simple enough because the church has forgot to do them. Amen. Amen. We're going to have to get back, start submitting ourselves again, Amen. resisting the devil, and put him on the run. We want to come in the house of God, sit in the pew with the devil, and preach around him. Well, I will tell you something. I don't like him in my church. Amen. I'm ready to run him out. Amen. I don't like him in front of my brothers and sisters. And I don't care if it's a shout worthy or not. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I don't like coming into the house of God and being choked by a devil that somebody's brought in here. Amen. 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 Come on. Now what are we supposed to be packing? What do we say we got? We say we got the Spirit of God. Come on. But we're saying, well, we got the Spirit of God when we want it, and when we don't want it, we sit there and take the devil. Amen. Don't you think it's time to make him go? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Go. So it's time to start submitting to God. Resisting the devil in your place. Put your plate back every now and then. Turn the internet off every now and then. Yeah, come on. Give it a little bit more to God. scripture to you because I don't believe in uh, I believe we ought to always should be able to back something up with the word of God you don't uh, need my opinion you need uh, the word of God so I'm going to go to the book of John I know students that have been there once but let's go to the book of John let's go to the 8th chapter and let's go down to the 44th verse. And God was talking to me about this over here, and I thought that it was for a different time and a different season. But uh, if, I, if I could say, and I ain't got a title, but if I could say anything, I'd say it's time to dust the rock off. And, uh, you know, we, we hear a lot of things and we sing a lot of things. And uh, but truly, the, the Bible, 
And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very blunt. Seems like it's the, the attitude here tonight. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. See this book right here? This is a spiritual book. It ain't a fleshly book. Uh, it's a spiritual book. John 4, 24. God is a spirit. So to worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth. Because I'm talking to you about getting something else. So, uh, uh, but in the book of John, in the 8th chapter, the 44th verse, if you're in the house tonight, I ask you to stand for the reading of the Word of God. Because I believe that God deserves respect. Amen. And uh, what he did for us, I believe there needs to be order in the house of God. I believe there's an order with God. If you look for Genesis to Revelation, he laid it out. And uh, if you don't believe that, just live by one scripture. He said, I am the author and the finisher. All right. Of what? Huh? Whose faith? All right. So if he's the author and the finisher, that means if he's the author, who writes the book? The author, right? Are you with me? Okay. So that means he set the order in the beginning, and he'll be the order in the end. Okay? It don't matter who's doing what. God is the order, brother. And we can all have an opinion about it, this or that. And it's time, you know, I hear it all the time, you know, when people go through seasons, you'll tell me one week to put my big boy pants on, but next week I come to visit you, and you're sucking the carpet. Excuse my French. It's time to dust the rock off and get back up. You know, we sing a lot of things, and we say a lot of things. But are you a Christian? Or are you not? The Bible says, and if we just look at it, and I know everybody's heard it before, but it's basic instruction before leaving earth. And, you know, I, I looked at the definition for what an ark was, and the second definition in the in the uh, Webster, and, I, and if you don't know me, Aaron Webster, he was a man of God, but the second definition that it gives you after it talks about an ark of God, it says a starship. And this is the basic instructions before leaving earth. This is what's telling me how to drive that starship from this Oh, Lord, have mercy. From this place here to the one that he's building for us. Because I just read it in the Word just a minute ago. He said, a new heaven and a new earth. Because he said, the former brother, he's going to do away with it. He's going to destroy it. He's getting us ready to leave here, man. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, I don't think I will. Come on, brother. Amen. But in the 44th verse, like I say, it's time to dust the rock off. It says, Ye, and this is Jesus, for in the Bible says, study and show yourself approved. I can't, I shouldn't preach to you anything if you ain't read it or if I don't explain it before we go into it. But you can take the word of God, you can kill somebody with it. You can beat them to the point where they never want to walk back in the church again. Or you can take the word of God and tell them, look, all I know is Jesus Christ, him crucified, he said, by grace is sufficient. Get back up, get back in the fight. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But this is Jesus speaking into the Jews because when Jesus came, they didn't believe he was the Son of God. They didn't believe he was the Messiah. They didn't know who he was, bro. They've been praying the whole time for a Savior to show up. He done showed up and walked right in the house and they said, look, how can you be him? They're looking for somebody to spot the Romans. He come to kill the devil. And, oh, Lord, have mercy. They just want to even fight the wrong thing. A lot of times that's what we're wanting. We're wanting our life bill paid. We're wanting the kids to act good. We're wanting the... Lord, I'm going to preach here in a minute. We're wanting everything to go right. We're praying about what we ought to be saying is, God, give me the ability to stand and look the enemy in the face and say, that will not my house. It won't go on here. Leave from me. Oh, yeah, We're always running on our way. Come on, brother. Good Lord. Now, I'm going to tie all this together here, I think. God, thank God. I don't know. But in the 44th verse, in the 8th chapter in the book of John, it says, Ye are of your father, the devil. Amen. Now, this is written in red. And this is one part of the book I don't think that we need a theologian to sit down and explain to us. Just believe what thus saith the word of God said. And if it's written in red, guess who was speaking? The word was the word of God. He said it's manifested in the flesh. And Lord, if you think he ain't here, that's the Holy Ghost. God with us right now. He's still with us. He ain't never left us. So he said, I'd never leave you, never forsake you. I'd go all the way to the end with you. So this is Jesus speaking unto the Jews. It says, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. It says, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. 
For he is a liar and the father of them all. You can be seated tonight. I hope I can get an amen with that. Amen. But now, and I don't know where God's taking us with this. I'm telling you, he's going to give it to me as we preach. Because he showed it to me in the word as we're sitting here in the church. But I heard a lot of things. I heard Brother Stu talking about the 15th chapter of the book of John when Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And anybody that brings forth not good fruit will be hewed down and cast into the fire. That's what he's saying. Look, the definition of a Christian is to be Christ-like. He said, I couldn't give life and give it more abundantly. His plan wasn't to hew you down and cast you in the fire, but it was to give life unto that thing that was dead. He said, I am the vine. We are the branches. Grapes down one side of my house. I got a big old yard. All the way down one side of my yard ain't nothing but grapes. There's one thing about it. And man, them grapes come forth every year. But I've noticed something about it. If I go out and trim them up every year, if I go out and trim all the dead stuff off of it, and I'll get it, it look like I've murdered them vines. But along about May, brother, people come to the house and say, My Lord, brother. Why are them grapes doing so good? Because I got out and I paid a little bit of attention to them. Everything was dead on them. I cut it off. Oh, and you know what? This is the word of God said. He blessed me. Oh, Lord, if I serve you, not only would he bless me coming in, but he blessed me going out. He blessed me in the city. He blessed me in the field. He said, look, my cross will bring forth the fruit, brother. Hey, but you got to pay some attention to the church. Amen. Lord, and I've heard it sung here tonight. And it's okay because we've been singing it for years and years and years. And I was reading it today, but in the, oh Lord, in the book of Isaiah, I was reading and, and it said, look, that God will make the rocks cry. God stopped me dead in my tracks. He said, who is the rock? I said, Jesus is the rock. He said, but what did first Peter say? He said, I am what? The stone we know the word God says that he's the stone you out of the mountain of that hand. And when Peter would go on and say, look, that you are lively stone. I've heard it talked about all night long here in this church. And I've preached it a hundred thousand times. Ooh, I don't know about that much. God correct me if I'm wrong about that. It's probably come out of my mouth more than a hundred thousand times. But Elijah built an altar. But I want to tell you something about that altar that Elijah built. And the word of God told me there in second that he took and he built that altar. And he took 12 precious stones. He never said he went and got a truckload. He never said, look, he went and bought them off the mason down the street. He said he took 12 precious stones and he built that altar. God said, look, these are the stones that I said would cry out. It's time that he took them all. He said, these are the living stones. He said, this is the rock that I was speaking about. Look, we are the rock of God. We are the ones that will cry out when the devil comes. Sissy, have you not been down on your knees? Cry out. It's time to dust the up off the rock and get out. I don't believe that's what God is saying. Well, let me give it to you in the Word of God. Let's go back to the book of Matthew. We'll go to... Oh Lord. Let me get my chapter right. I don't want to give you anything that ain't right. Whew. Somewhere... Oh, I said thank you, dude. Oh, look at that. God knows. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my brother. Hello, Lord. That's all right. That was just fighting it. So somebody here doesn't question whether we're a rock or not. That's okay. And that's why we're going back it up by the word. Come on. I had it marked and I done pour it apart in my Bible. It's all right, God's got it. 16th chapter, book of Matthew. And you can read this at home, you know, I ain't going to read it to you now. I'll preach it to you. And it starts in the 13th verse. In the book of Matthew, Jesus had called his disciples unto him. Now when they came, he had a question for them. Who does man say I am? And, oh Lord, he ain't going to get it out <laughs> That's what a lot of problem is with us, brother. We don't know who God is in our life. 
He was asking a direct question. He didn't say, look, go think about this. Go, go, go find Google and, and talk to Siri and see if she's going to tell you. But he said, who does man say that I am? And, you know, they began to say, hey, some say you're a lot. Some say John the Baptist was first. He said, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Some say Jeremiah. Other ones say you're just a prophet. That's what our problem is in our lives. We don't know who God is anymore. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he's like, we don't realize what it's being by being baptized into grace, by being given salvation freely. Let me tell you something in here today, and I'm going to speak this, and I'm going to speak it boldly. The book of Matthew also says that men are called few are chosen. If you read the word of God, salvation is given freely unto everybody without a respect of person. But God chooses people to stand up and preach his gospel. God chooses people to lead to you. God chooses pastors. But it's time we dust the rock off. We're like a sponge anymore. Everybody around us, and I'm going to get back to the scripture here in a minute, but we allow so many people to get around us. God told me down in church, or he was not. The problem is, you know, you got that old commercial about the insurance, and you got the rape suckers. You got them stuck all over the front of the window everywhere. You got annoying suckers in our churches that are speaking to us. Bad thing after bad thing after bad thing. They need to dust the rock off. We need to know that he's still Jehovah God with us. That he is El Shaddai. He is my almighty God. Yeah. He doesn't come to the feet of the enemy. He doesn't put the devil in his place. Amen. I'm supposed to be a Christian. I'm supposed to be Christ-like. Yeah. And all them, give me. Yeah, you're John the Baptist. You're Elijah. So say Jeremiah. And there is old Peter. He asked me. But who do I say that I am? Peter? Who do you say that I am, Peter? And Peter would speak up and say, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Stop there, just for a second. Next thing the scripture says, Jesus says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. You, do you know what Peter's name means? Who said that? <coughs> Little stone. What was God saying right there? God was saying, look, Peter, you're the rock. And he would go on to tell him, saying, he wasn't talking, I heard preachers preach that Peter is the rock. No, he's, he is a little stone. But Jesus told him, he said, look, Peter, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for this is not been revealed to you through flesh and blood, but from my Father. Look, God was telling him, look, the Spirit had done spoke to him. It says, look, this is my beloved Son, and who I am well pleased. This is going to be the one that lives here. This is going to be the one that gives you power and authority over all things. This is going to be the one. And he told him, he said, bless God. And he told him, he said, upon this rock, he wasn't pointing at Peter. He said, for thou art Peter. He never looked at him and said, thou art the rock. He said, for thou art Peter. And then look down upon this rock, upon the rock of salvation. Oh Lord, I shall build my church. He wasn't building Peter's church. He was building the church for him right now. He was building the church down the road. The Christian said, No, you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That was the church that God was building. He said, Upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now where he is, he said, Look, upon this rock I shall build my church. And you're going to walk around with your head on down like you're dying all the time, speaking doubt in your life. You know what you need to do with that branch? You need to reach over and cut it off and say, Not my house, not here. That's why I'm very pleased to ask for me and my house. We should serve the Lord. Joshua 24 15. How many people come in around you and all you hear is, Woe me and woe this and woe that? Yeah, I'm telling you. You ladies want to tell me this, but there's a song out there. My wife doesn't know to it. It's the morning song. Good morning. Good morning. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Who sings that? Uh, Mandisa. Mandisa sings that. You wake up, it's just another good morning. Man, I can wake up, who Lord, with grace and mercy on me in the best mood ever and go to Walmart and before I get out of that place I want to kill everybody in there. I've never experienced a land done of the tax step 
to me because 25 millions of one cashier and I'm thinking what in the world is going on here. These are the branches I'm talking about that we need to cut out of our house. That's what Brother Stu was saying in the 15th chapter of the book of John. You need to cut them things off. Pew them down. Get rid of them. And it's for Christians. Everything that the world stacks on us. Everything the world puts on us. All that dust we collect from being out there. The word of God said, look, if you go into a house and they don't receive it, dust the very, you wipe it off the dust from your feet. Every bit of it. Get it off of you. Him crucified, just move on. That's right. Amen. Boy, this is tough preaching. I like to plow, plow on some hard ground here tonight. Man, I have tried. I have been around people and been around people and been around people. I have went to the same house every week, talked to them for three months. And the whole time, they're still doing what they're always doing. And I'm over here drowning. Lord have mercy, everything they had, now I got. Now I know where we're going with this. Thank you, Lord. These people in your life are just sucking the life out of them. Right. Lord, they never have nothing good to say. Amen. Lord have mercy, it's always bad. Yeah, right. They say, you know, all that joy and all that happiness and all that believing in God that you had, they just suck it right out of you. Amen. You know, you walked in there crystal clean, you're leaving like a magnet that's been in a junkyard. Everything in there is stuck clean. <laughs> it belongs back in the junkyard. Don't back it around. Would you cut that stuff off? Get right off. <laughs> you are the rocks that God was talking about. I am the rock. Ooh, Lord, I didn't say it once. I guess I'll have to say it again. The definition of a Christian is to be Christ like. Amen. I won't give you anything that came back up. Because then it would just be Brother Rick's opinion. Jesus never was. He said, Look, I am the rock. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am He. And Father, we don't even know who we're talking about anymore. Yes, He is. Lord Legion wrote who He was. The two men against the tomb, they know who He was. They said, Master, Lord, have you come to persecute us before our time? At least you know exactly. There comes the Holy One. There comes the Son of God. Do we know who God is? We need to know who God is in our life. That's right. We need to dust the rock off. We need to dust myself off. Lord mercy, we need to get the rock out of the coffin. <laughs> Blow the dust off of it. Get it back out and say, Lord, that's a rock in there. He said, the, from the foundation of the world, it was four. Brother, that little thing, nothing can defeat it. This is what I need in my life. i got to dust it off and get it down deep inside of it. That way I'm not defeated anymore. That way I'm not beat. That way when I come to church, I don't come in with my head hung down. I come like the 150 Psalm and the 6th verse said, everything has got bread. Praise ye the Lord. I am the rock that God was talking about. I praise him, brother, when I'm in a valley. I praise him when I'm on top of the mountain. I praise him when I broke, and I praise him when I make a death He is my God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. We got to get it out and dust it off. If I know anything about a fire, man, I don't know who needs this in here. Lord, what's that? Man, you're the fire. God, and we know the word of God says that God will make his ministers a flaming fire. That's right. But anybody that preaches the gospel, and the gospel is of the kingdom of heaven. If you go tell somebody what Jesus did for you, the gospel is the good news. Right. Inside of you, you've got your mind laid up. You're on your way to heaven. Look, there ain't nothing going to stop you, brother. You know, you're like one of them old saints that happened when the temple was rent from top to bottom. It said the ground began to shake and the grave burst open. Look, I was one of those people who was a dead. But you know what? I'm alive in Christ Jesus now, brother. I ain't in that grave anymore. I like, guess what? Little old brother said, look, there comes Brother Rick. And I know he's got something good to say about God. Ooh, Lord. You're that same person. Get dusted back on again. That's right. Man, I'll never be able to. You know, I want to. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thought I was through. When those graves burst open, and it says the saints come forth, and this is the book of Matthew also, it says that they were seen walking in the city. 
They've been dead, but now they see it. Mount of Transfiguration when Moses and Elijah, when they appeared, they know who they was. I can imagine sitting there and saying, hey, look at that little preacher. Go on, look at that. He ain't in the ground anymore. He's up by us. Somebody don't say he's free, brother. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. It's very clear that when, you know, he hung on Calvary's cross before he ascended, he descended. He went into those that were imprisoned into the heart of earth. He went down and he took the keys from hell. He said, everybody there, free by grace and mercy. What up? They got up and began to walk around. They wasn't down and wasn't defeated anymore. They wasn't bound up in some grave. There's too many people in the church that are bound up in some grave. And we need to get up, dust yourself off, and get back to it. God is coming. <coughs> the word teaches us, brother, that Eastern skies will part. And on a cloud of glory, my Lord's going to step out, brother. Lord, with the sound of an archangel. Oh, Lord, and it says, oh, Lord, that the dead in Christ shall rise. And those that are alive and remain shall meet him in the air. And I'm telling you, I get to go first because, yeah, I was alive in the world. But when Jesus come in, the word of God tells me, now I am dead to the world. But I'm alive in Christ Jesus. Guess what? The dead's coming forth. I'm leaving here in that starship, sissy. I've got the rock up. There ain't nothing here to hold me anymore. Yeah. I'm leaving this whole place, brother. That's what we're going to be doing. Amen. And whoever you are here that's struggling right now. And this is hard preaching. You're, you're struggling because of the people around you who <coughs> killed me. I don't know. I can't do anything but be plain spoken. The, you know, there's always going to be a Judas. Always brother. There's always going to be people that are speaking doubt. People who truly don't believe. And every now and then, instead of climbing down in the same hole they're with, we just got to cut them loose. Amen. And you need to dust yourself off. Yeah. Everything they put on you. Man, y'all are quiet. Right. You got to dust all that junk off of you. Look, and get back in and say, look, I am the rock that God was talking about. Look, I'm a lively stone, the book of Peter said. Amen. I ain't sitting still. I ain't dying with him. I'm moving on with Jesus. I got to get up and do what God called me to do. Look, sissy, well, I can't hold your hand and get them to heaven. I can't do it. He said, if you got me, you got by the word. If you draw away by their own love, brother, that is the word of God. There's only one way to the kingdom of heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. I can't take it to heaven. I can tell you the good news all day long. That look, the ditch they were in ain't no deeper than the ditch I was in. When God called me, God saved me, God found me, God qualified me. I got up, dusted myself back off, and went to preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Don't let people get you tied down. Cut them loose. Cut them loose. Who the Lord is us sometimes, brother. <laughs> you got to cut them loose. You ever heard those saying? And I know pastor's got a saying that he always said, you know, if you run with a dog, if you got a dog and he runs with a dog, has got fleas, he's going to have fleas too. Don't yeah, you know right? right? Amen. So you can't do that. You got to get up, church. You got to know who God is in your life. You got to speak like Peter spoke. Yeah, Peter would fall down. Peter would deny Christ. But Peter would get to the point to where his shadow, Lord, they would lay people by the thousands in the streets that were lame, that were possessed with the devil, and they were just hoping that Peter's shadow would touch them because they know that the anointing that Peter had on his life, look, the devil couldn't handle the devil couldn't stop it. And that's the way we need to be. He would get to the point in his life where he looked at a little maiden named Tabitha in the book of Acts, and she was laying there dead. And the, and the word of God tells me that she was an apostle of Jesus, that she had done a lot of good work for Jesus, but she had died. Do you know what old Peter did? Peter went over to his sister, one that was dead and gone, and he said, Tabitha, arise, get up out of that. It's time that the minister, it's time that the pastor, it's time that the church world tells the sheep, tells the Christian, get up, brother, you didn't lay it down. Oh Lord, if you're here, I know that's tough, tough words. But if you feel like that you're around somebody and they just drained you dry, the Bible teaches us confess our faults one to another so we may be healed. 
That's not, that's not a psychiatrist. He wasn't saying go out and tell your teacher, tell the social worker, tell your psychiatrist what your problem is. Don't tell the doctor, look, I'm losing my mind. I don't want to get out of bed anymore. All I want to do is lay here. I ain't got enough energy to do anything. The world has sucked me dry and there's nothing left. He wasn't saying go and to the doctor and tell him. He was saying, look, find you a brother. Find you a sister. Confess your faults one to another. He didn't say go find the devil and tell him how to, to defeat you. He didn't say get on Facebook and say my life's falling apart and I can't pay my bills and I've lost my job and everything else and the door's wide open and look, it ain't cracked anymore and then open it up. Come on, the devil. He didn't say do that. He said, look, find one another. Christian people need Christian people. Find you somebody. Find you a brother. Find you a minister that you know is serving God and get down and begin to pray and say, Lord, I need you to move on this situation. Faith believing that God's going to show up and the mountain's going to move and it's going to leave your life. Man. Well, some people, oh man, I'm trying to hush. Anyone with me? Some people enjoy your afflictions. Some people enjoy it. It makes them feel better seeing you down. Be careful who you tell what. Don't tell them how bad you're doing. Tell them how good God is. Tell them, look, this valley is just about over. He doesn't give me enough strength in this one to climb the next one. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Ooh, Lord, I better quit or I'm going to get on something we've been studying about. If you're here, like turn this back over to the pastor. And you know, and sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's even a child. I've been through this myself. I'm about to look my own son in the eyes and tell him, son, look, it's God's way or no way. It might be that daughter. It could be a sister or a brother who's just, and they're steady trying to convince you that their way's right. Just get the word of God. Everything, every answer you ever need is in that Bible. If you're here and you feel like they've just been draining you dry, I would encourage you to come up to this altar. I would encourage you to come up here and say, God, I want to be in a season that is filled with joy. I want to be in a season to where my brothers and my sisters are speaking about. God, if it's not possible to change them, change me. Amen. We can't never choose. Oh, Lord have mercy. My wife showed me something the other day that's going to be. I can't change the people I'm around. But I can change this old person right here. And a lot of times that's what we need to be praying. God changed me. We don't need to be nobody's judge. Jesus is the judge. Peter also says that every knee shall bow before Jesus, every tongue shall confess unto God. Jesus decides on who goes to heaven. It's by his blood that we're able to go. A lot of times we need to be praying, God change me. God, get me up out of this season of doubt. God, get me out of this season where I feel like I'm dead. God, breathe life back into these bones again as you did in the valley in the book of the sea. Breathe life in me, God. God, don't let me speak doubt. Lord, let me cut the bad things in my life out. Let me be that one who believes in Jesus Christ and the Christ. If you're here tonight and you're fighting that, and you feel like you're dead, I want you to know the Bible says, all ye that are worn and heavy laden, he said, come unto me. And I'm not talking about this preacher, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. He said, come unto me, and I shall give you rest. And if there's anything I know about a good rest, I can be worn, come out, brother, and lay down in the bed at night and close my eyes and say, Lord, bless me this night. Lord, let me get a good rest. And in the morning when the sun comes up, and he will come up in the morning. I feel great. If you need that in your life, I would encourage you to come to this office. God's got the church. Amen. Amen. Rick is preaching about his great value. And I'm sure you probably didn't see what I told Lorraine to put on for you. We heard us talking. Y'all remember what we gave out for Mother's Day? How many sing rings post on it today? The flower. 
He's about that big. You remember when I gave him out for Mother's Day? He was about three inches, two or three inches high. And now it's a whole flower out like this. I brought it in when it started getting cold. I watered it. And we took care of it. And I said, Lorraine, I want you to put this on. And he was talking about, he had to trim his vines and take care of it, cut off the bear. I thought about the scripture Jesus said. When he come by the tree, the barren tree, and they said, let's cut it down. And Jesus said, no, not this year. He said, let me dig around it. Put the dung around it, fertilize it. If it don't do it next year, well, there is coming time when it's going to be cut down if it don't produce. Like he was talking about. Amen. But let's try everything we can. Dig around it. Dung around it. That's what he's trying to do for you. Amen. I believe he's trying to dig a little bit, fertilize a little bit. Amen. To help you out. So if you need help tonight, I. I Encourage you to come up here to the Lord.
take care of church business sometimes while I'm up there playing. Right. <laughs> right. Amen. Miss the preacher up playing on me. Amen. Right. Amen. Ain't God good? All right. the time. He's never let me down.